Hey. Hello. I'm, we're here in New York City. In Chinatown. In the Chinatown. bottom of Manhattan. The bottom of Manhattan. Tell me where we are, because we walked here across the Brooklyn Bridge, and I don't even know. It was the Manhattan Bridge. We're just at the foot of the Manhattan Bridge. It's not really the bottom, I understand. It's lower Manhattan. This uh, guy here, this is Aaron. Hello, everybody. Aaron um, is a, a zine writing man. He is a musician. Mm -hmm. Or a drummer, at least. Or at least a drummer. I love drummers. You know I'm a bass player. Got a loving drummer. I love this drummer. Um, seen him play a bunch of times. I think it definitely a few times. You're in uh, your your latest project is called uh, what's what's that band called? We got a band called Pinhead Gunpowder. Pinhead Gunpowder. And Gun the new album just got released today, and which is uh, pretty exciting, but strangely sort of uneventful for me. I, I got uh, I got like two texts, one from my bandmates and one from someone else, and that was about all I could tell. What did that you, something happened? What did you do to celebrate your record release? just walked over the bridge with you and uh we're gonna go get some soup okay uh, and that's it so that's not the subject of our video no the <laughs> record release however that's funny that that that's we're here to celebrate the pinhead gunpowder lp aunt by talking about postcards and letter yeah. writing so this guy Josh aaron talk about. yeah this guy aaron uh who i've known i've known you for a long time i um, mean it's not 50 years but it's like you know at least 40. At least 40 years. So this is the case with so many people that I talk to. <laughs> it's awesome. It's good to know people and to be around and to be alive and to know yeah. them. And to but this is the first time them. we've ever properly had a hangout. And the first time that I've ever interviewed you. But I interviewed Josh. You've interviewed me. So it's super cool. So Aaron does a thing besides what we've already talked about. And that is that sometimes I will get a letter or a postcard sure and they're always um they're always it's always cool it's always cool you get a random thing and you realize this is like um to me like i tried using a rotary dial phone i seem to it's impossible and i seem to have just as difficult of a time writing a letter or a postcard and putting a stamp on it and having it actually find its way into a mailbox it's like the seemingly seeming impossibility in this age of emails and um facsimiles and um all the other things the facebook messaging oh gosh i said it sorry and then all the tweeting and the and the and the and the, and the, and the texting all these things i mean we you can text but you can send a letter to someone so what is it that how long have you been sending letters I want to ask you some questions about this, like because it's foreign I'm, to me. I'm sad to say that the thing that is unique and odd to you is just completely second nature to me. Uh, I'm not trying to prove a point. I'm not. Uh, to me, it's not antiquated. To me, actually, I write more letters than I used to because it uh, fulfills um, actually an emotional need, but also just an obligation where. Uh, probably maybe it comes maybe it's a negative inspiration thing where you just want to tell everyone you love them while they're still here with you and cool. so you send you know anytime something crosses your mind about how much you care about someone or that you're thinking of them or that um you know you like something they did uh it's nice to drop a little postcard or a letter so if you have advice for someone like me mm who is letter writing a verse yes <laughs> and um i don't know like um i'm just gonna i think i'm gonna buy some postcards yeah i'm on tour right now and i'm hanging out here in new york for a minute got yeah. a chance to catch up with you and i'm asking you this i'm gonna buy some postcards and you gotta let's just buy some stamps buy some stamps usually i have a no advice policy but in this case yeah with postcards, you know, less is more. You don't need to say. It's really, you're in a band, you write songs, you write lyrics. Yeah. It's just, you know, less is more. A few lines can say a lot. I mean, I can it's write. Like, it is like, it is like a song. A postcard is like a song. So I think it's like half a song. It has its own momentum. You know it's going to end. 
you know, it's like it's like a one minute song. It's like a hardcore song. Right. The postcard is so short, it only needs to say, you know, one thing, and then you have a little twist at the end that goes like, you know, like a good song. It's like, oh, I love you. Oh, pardon, I'm gonna kill myself now. You know, it just it has a thing at the end that's like, oh wait. You know, there's a twist. You. There's yeah. a plot twist, plot twist that has them waiting for the next postcard. That's what I suggest. So, in this in this strange way, you gave me a writing suggestion, and I'm more just I'm more just like the mechanics of mm. actually mailing a letter. Like, do you go to a post a P, Do you go to a PO box regularly? I do. I go to a PO box. I go to you know all of us who are involved in publishing or doing mail order or even record labels. We go to every every post office in town. We okay. know all the people. Okay. Sometimes I even try to bribe them. I know what they like. I'll bring them, you know, flowers or books uh, because they will hate us. Um, and so you go yeah. different days to different ones. But you know, I because you don't want them to know how often you mail letters. It's not that, but the mechanics. I, I you know the whole advice thing is basically. I think people should do exactly what's natural to them. I, I don't. I I uh, I think if it's not natural for you to write letters, you shouldn't. You know, but if you, because it, there's nothing wrong with any of the different mediums. I think it's just what comes most natural. But it is special on tour, and I will say that Jason, my bandmate, he does send a when he's on tour, he sends a postcard to his family from every single town, and he tries to get one from every town, and. So I don't think it's just about what's on the postcard. It's the whole, uh, you know, when people talk about New York here, we're in New York, they can say it and it's like, oh, it's all gentrified and it's all these horrible things. And it's like these big buildings and it's all money. Well, for me, it's not for me. It's thrift stores, post offices, uh, you know, and that's it. Basically, it's thrift stores and post offices and parks. And so that's my whole life is just going back and forth to post offices and checking the thrift store on the way. So it it serves a purpose in that it's it it it's a way to navigate the city too. How many times a week do you drop mail? Every, on average, every day. Every day you're every, dropping mail. Every day I drop mail. And you think Jason puts puts finds a finds a a PO box every every day? Not a PO box, but a mailbox. A mailbox. Yeah. yeah. I have a PO box. When you're too. driving, you can just be like, "There's one." Pull over. I think he does. Okay. Kudos. Yeah. That's All right. that's that's good. I think we're good. Yeah, I that's think we wrap. talked about it. All right. Thanks so much for taking <laughs> the time. Peace, everybody.